Ah, here he is. Oh, uh, there he Good is. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning, Joe. What do you got for us? Uh, some coffee. You know, there's nothing like coffee first thing in the morning or any time of the day, really. You know, coffee, cream, stir stick, the whole coffee experience. I gotta go, though, now, because, you know, I gotta work, work, work. You know me always. Uh, Joe, do you have the report? Do you have the report? <coughs> the report? <coughs> I don't think he has the report. Where's the report, Joe? <laughs> See? I don't think he has the report. Do you have the report? Do you have it, Joe? <laughs> I am pretty sure he does not have the report. <laughs> Good work, Joe. Gee, I didn't think you had the report. once again to the pit of ultimate darkness. Hello, I'm your host, Simon Milligan. Tonight, we enter the dimly lit regions of the human mind. <laughs> Who knows what secrets are stored inside this organ? Who knows? Hey, look, a quarter. Find his keepers. <laughs> and now... I will introduce one who is beloved of Satan. Manservant! Hecubus! Good evening, Master. I am here to serve you and Satan. Hecubus, do you know why I was late coming to the show this evening? No, Master. Because there was a parked car blocking my car in the driveway. Hecubus, do you own a Green Valiant? Yes, I do, Master. Evil! Still evil after all these years. Heck, you missed the evil one. <laughs> now on with the show. We need a volunteer. Do you dare come to the pit of darkness? Sure. Arise and approach. You are powerless to resist. Welcome to hell. And what is your name? Uh, my name's Tony Henderson. Tell me, Tony Henderson. I'm about to rob you of your free will. Does this frighten you? Sure. You are a chicken! He is a chicken! <laughs> Aren't you gonna hypnotize me first? Of course. <laughs> Warming up. <laughs> Hecubus, uh, hypnotize the victim with the sleep of ages. Uh, need a vacation. Yes, master. Tony Henderson, repeat after me. Owa, Tana, Siam. Owa Tana Siam. Quicker. Owa Tana Siam. Quicker. Owa Tana Siam. <laughs> Good one, Ed. He got you. He got you. Tony Henderson, you've been made a fool of by the forces of darkness. <laughs> and now, the real sleep of age is done by a professional. Laval Sabah Kati. Tony Henderson, you are now asleep. Sure. <laughs> Tony Henderson, please stop giggling. Now you are a chicken. He is a chicken. And in a moment, we will wake you. But from now on, please stop giggling. But I... <laughs> Whenever you hear this phrase, 
Are you sure that's the phrase? Whenever you hear the phrase, she shall, she shalls by the sea, sorry. She shall, she la, Shonda is my favorite group. Whenever you hear that phrase, you will turn back into a chicken. But for now, please stop giggling. One, two, three, you are awake. Awake. Now, go to your nine to five world, cursed by my spell. Thank you for volunteering and being a good sport. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are really funny. No one knows. We're evil. We're evil. <laughs> That is the end! The end where you, the audience, traditionally applauds at us, the act, the, the end. Thank you! Have a good night and please remember to turn your clocks back one hour. Evil me! People say, Bruce, what's this with you and jazz? What's the beef with you and jazz music? I say, well, I really hate jazz. They say, what do you hate about poor old jazz? I say, the sound. The sound that jazz instruments make when they're being manipulated by jazz players for the delight of jazz respondents. I think of it as musical barf. They say, I don't think you've given jazz a chance. Well, I maintain, I haven't given suicide a chance, but, well, I did give suicide a chance. But that's only because I was threatened with jazz. You know, jazz music. One thing I hate, one thing I hate is being woken up in the middle of the night when I'm dreaming about, let's say, promiscuity with dignity. All right. By a rap tap tapping on my window by those guys with goatee things on their faces, saying, hey, can we come in? Bino's clarinet's getting wet. And then they go into this sort of Gene Krupa trance. Jazz schmazz. I'm sorry, I've got to go that far. Jazz schmazz. You know what? I'd like to declare this a jazz-free zone. About 40 miles, as far as the jazz hating crow flies in any direction. Just paradise. Those guys would go to work, and it wouldn't be there. I'm gonna ask a question. What sort of music do you think there is in hell? You know, H-E double hockey stick? Well, I think it's probably hateful freeform jazz. And in heaven? Country and western music. Choice is pretty obvious. It's not jazz. It's not. Ba ba da be da boo ba da bo jazz. <clears throat> What's that? Like a recorder or something? <laughs> no, I'm not into it. I fuzz pedal. That's what I'm into. You know. Hey, hello. Yep. Yeah. Tony. Thanks. Hello? Tony Henderson? Mm -hmm. Yes? She shall Sally be the sissy kebab. Beg your pardon? She shall shana na shazu pits. Have you got the right number? Evil. Shilla kake wookie papa. Close enough. Uh, yes. Oh. She shall say so for the sunny Georgia. You are a chicken. Hey, you okay? Oh yeah, no, I was just thinking. I saw the worst hypnotist act last week. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it was like these two guys. And...
But master, he did not become a chicken. Yes, Hecubus, but you must remember, the path of evil twists and turns and winds. No! Tony Henderson did not turn into a chicken, but our phone call kept him away from his work. Ah. And he'll be in trouble with his boss. And productivity will go down. 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 At the beginning of this year, as some of you keeners might remember, the kids in the hall launched the Touch Paul Bellini contest. The contest in which you, the viewer, could win an opportunity to touch Paul Bellini. <laughs> well, the response was overwhelming, with over 12,000 callers calling in the first two and a half seconds alone from all over the United States. But, unfortunately, there can only be one winner. The prize himself, Paul Bellini, selected the winner out of a hat. And that winner of this year's 1990 Touch Paul Bellini contest is... <laughs> this gal. Rebecca Klatka of St. Petersburg, Florida. So, stay tuned, because in an upcoming episode of the Kids in the Hall show, Rebecca Klatka will stand face to face with this interesting human specimen and touch Bellini. <laughs> Solve it with the three chairs. Take out the three chairs. This is my idea. Replace it with one big sofa. Then you can put the sofa, you know, against the wall or underneath the window. I think right. it'll look nice. And I like that lamp. It's really is the finest feature to live in space. Space is the whole key to happy living, I think, you know. Maybe we have too much space. Maybe we should get boarders to come in so the living room looks tighter. Maybe we should have people in all the time. You know, always have parties and invite people. I was never happy with the second floor. Maybe we should take out the second floor and put it beside the living room. We have a very wide living room. Of course, the interesting thing about space is, honey, is that it is everywhere you go. As a matter of fact, I kind of like the way they use the space here. You know, they had three small chairs. Excuse here. me, hon. I've got to go freshen my hors d'oeuvre. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hors d'oeuvres. Yes. I loved them as a child. Me too. <laughs> then we should meet for lunch sometime. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. No. Not just lunch. <laughs> Mingo. No, I Hello, Sharon. Jarrell, hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Rory, thank you for finally coming to one of my parties. <laughs> Thanks back. for inviting Listen, us. Listen, come on over here. There's someone I want to introduce you to. Good, mingling. <laughs> Sandra, darling, turn around. I want you to meet Sharon and Rory. Rory and Sharon, this is my wife, Sandra. She's all I have in the world. <laughs> Nice to meet you, ma'am. Yeah. Go on, Sandra. Rory doesn't bite. For <laughs> <laughs> d'oeuvre? No. no, thanks. You know me and food. For <laughs> d'oeuvre? Uh, no, thanks. I had lunch alone in my office. Ah! Hey, you two should have an affair. <laughs> you don't usually laugh this much. <laughs> she sure has been shaving her legs an awful lot. <laughs> 
What are we doing? This is crazy. We're involved in craziness. Your wife, my husband, I think he knows. We've got to talk. got to talk. <laughs> Listen, what are we doing? You're right. This is crazy. We're involved in craziness. You're right. Your husband. Your wife. You're right. I think they know. Bye. Bye. I love it. Private correspondence of Buddy Cole and Elizabeth Windsor. The kerfuffle. I've been corresponding with Elizabeth Windsor now for 15 years. She is not the Queen of England to me. She's an old friend. That's 15 years of sharing. Sharing secrets. Sharing laughter and jewels. <laughs> she calls this a wand. Doesn't really work. She's never called me Buddy. She's always addressed me by my full name, Butterick. <laughs> Here's her latest missive now. I wonder what she's got to say. Oh, it is magic. <laughs> Dearest Butterick, it's us again. We are fine. Mother is fine. Mother is fine. And Charles keeps nagging me to abdicate. But, Butterick, it is my youngest, Edward, who concerns me at this juncture. For I fear that he might be, frankly, of a delicate nature. You know, not on the team, as they say. What I would like to know is, how can you tell? I thought that you'd be an expert in these matters, and since Beatrix is quite mad, you're the only other queen that I know. Please advise at once. I don't want to have to turn to Elton John. Sincerely, your devoted mortal, Beth. Lovely. Done. P.S. What can you tell me about this Andrew Lloyd Webber fellow? I don't trust the man without a chin. Who does? Listen, Lizzie's in a tizzy. I must write back to her immediate ma. Ma, Sherry. Oh, she'll hate that. She hates it when I write in French. I usually correspond in fag, but... It's incredible how often they're the same thing, Ness Pa. Oh. 
Mad Sherry, I really don't know that much about Edward, just what I read in the tabloids. But here goes. I think he throws the ball like a girl. <laughs> he seems skittish and, frankly, queen to queen. Sometimes you can really tell. <laughs> Being British doesn't help either. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was close. Oh my God, the royal seal. The lady's in a hurry. Dearest Patrick, things have gotten much worse here at the castle. I confronted Edward with my suspicions and he fled into the night. No one has seen him for weeks. Butterick, I'm an absolute wreck over the whole kerfuffle. I am completely out of my mind over the top, beyond the edge, clicking by a thread, ready to snap. Sincerely, a completely loony. Liz, wins are. <laughs> Liz, get a grip. Just because you're British doesn't mean you have to overact. Regardless of whether or not Edward is special, a fag at Buckingham Palace can hardly be a surprise. Your mother is the biggest fruit fly in all of merry old England. Dinogram for Buddy Cole. Oh, thanks. Oh my God, it's from Edward. Curtain's going up. Dearest Buddy, please help me. Mother's gone absolutely potty. Please let me come and stay at your pub for a while. I'll make myself useful. I can handle cash. I did do box office for cats, you know. And I do love Toronto. Please help me. Edward. Curtain's going down. Good job. Well, of course I'll give the poor boy refuge. I'm the ambassador of free love. Buddies has diplomatic immunity. I just hope they don't surround the place with sweaty British soldiers blaring rock music. I just might have to surrender. 